G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists in Australia do what they do. Well viewers, we're back in the beautiful city of Melbourne and we're about to go into the Quadrant Gallery on Barker's Road, Hawthorne. The Quadrant Gallery is one of Melbourne's leading art galleries and showcases the work of many of Australia's premier artists. The gallery was opened by Pam and Tony Jackson who have both been professional artists themselves for many years. Pam and Tony are passionate about working with artists and investors to create the best possible outcome for all of those interested in the world of art. Their aim is to show exciting and diverse artists and exhibit their work so that not just art buyers, but the general public can get to see the many talented people on display in the gallery. If you would like to get in touch with the gallery, you can phone them on 03 907 90943 or email them at the address below. Pam and Tony are two people that love to put colour on people's walls and also their lives as well. Well, good day viewers and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. We're in Hawthorne today in Melbourne and we're at the Quadrant Gallery. It's a fabulous gallery in Hawthorne. And I'm with a gentleman who is a very distinguished artist. He's one of the 20 Melbourne artists, which is one of the most distinguished art groups in Australia, Mr. Clive Sinclair. Hello, Graham. Welcome nice, to the show. Nice, nice to meet you. Fabulous to be here. Now, Clive is uh, a renowned teacher. I mean, literally, this man travels all over. I mean, the amount of people that he teaches and the amount of people that have influenced him as well. I mean, some of the great artists of Australia. But this really all started when you were a young bloke. Yes, it and did. your uncle took you to the National Gallery of Victoria. Yeah, he did, and from there you literally blossomed and said, "This is what I want to do." Yes, it did. I was about eleven or ten years old, and um, he also was an artist. There was yeah. a background through my family, and he um, took me to the National Gallery, and and it was the Black Friday painting by John Longstaff that yes. absolutely shone for me. And um, I stood in front of it and thought, this is an amazing painting. This is a really great painting. It's got a, a credible feel to it. And I thought, wow, people do this as a living. Yeah. And um, from that day onwards, I sort of became, I'd, I'd always drawn and I'd always been an artist in, in a sense of, as children always are, yeah. creative, draw, paint. And that sort of cemented the whole concept of me being a painter. The, uh, the portfolio that you've got and the amount of people that you've influenced in your career is quite exceptional. Yeah, look it is. And, and I do love teaching. I love, I love the feeling of teaching. I, I love the, uh, getting the spontaneous quality out to painters and, and showing it what it's about. And when someone does something as a student, and they and they do well, and it's just a great feeling, great it's, feeling to see. You know? It's fantastic. And, yeah, really good. Well, you're going to take us through one of your watercolours today. I am going to take you through one of my you watercolours. You are you are regarded as a master in all of the mediums. Yes. Yeah, yep, very yep. very much so. And, yep. uh, and you actually have one of these fantastic little. I've got what, a, are, they, what are these? An iPad. It's or, an iPad. An yes. iPad. It is I mean, a lot of artists use these these days. They're just fantastic for getting your colour and your tones and it's, and your light. Often you can just carry them around and. Yeah. Uh, so that's the image that we'll be producing today. It's a lovely evening scene. I was had a group down at Phillip Island two weeks ago. Let's Darden, get into it. I'll, I'll sit down and watch and we'll okay. fire some questions Let at you. Fire some questions. So we'll start it with um, a few lines just through here like this, coming up through there like that which is going to form the point around like this. So just showing areas where I'm going to do the watercolour. You just use a 2B pencil. 
Now I just use it, I actually use any pencil I get my hand on because it's just a line for where you've got some of your washes that are going to come through. Nothing more, so it doesn't have to be too elaborate of uh, what you're going to do with it as far as I'm concerned. Okay. There's an horizon line that just runs through there. As I say to my students, the horizon line is so very important in painting because it shows the top and bottom of your painting and where you sit. And most landscapes always have an horizon line. So you need an horizon line, even in still life, there's an horizon line on the table. So that's really all I need to do. So it's all created, ready to go. Now I need to start some washes. So what I will do is soak the paper now, absolutely soak it right through. It's a very important part really, isn't it? It is a huge important part. Now I did actually put a touch of masking fluid on there, which I needed to leave that for the, um, the end result when I want the white to come through. So this is a nice hake. It's actually a brand new hake, this. So oh, is it okay? It's brand new. It's, it's the first hake. time I've used the virgin <laughs> hake. So. <laughs> So it actually works really well across the, across the paper. I'm getting plenty of water on it, yep. and plenty of water is the main key in watercolour painting. As I say to students, when you work, you must get your first washes down very, very wet, and it helps the, the water and the colour to travel across the paper. Now I'll mix these two colours together, but I'll first just mostly run the Naples yellow. We will run that right through the water into here, and everywhere. Okay. So at the moment you can see that's quite a good wash right through. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit more to it, uh, a little bit pinker, so there's a little bit more vermilion running through this, which I want, while it's still wet. Whoa. Now that's fairly solid, but I want to run that just through there like that. Now I'm going to put some darks, medium darks in now already, which I need to get some reflections. So I'm using ultramarine blue, a viridian green, and a raw umber. And I just need to grab another brush here now, just to get some of these darks. And that's quite thick. You can mm. see that's gone on quite thick as a, as, a, as, a, as a wash. Yeah, isn't it? And that's what I wanted to create there now. And I'm letting it run down because I want to create that wash into the water. There's not too many watercolour artists that, that put it down that thickly. If you know where your water is and, and where, where it's going, you yep. can do it. Yeah, so it gives me that, uh, that there now. Now also at the same time, I'm going to run the blue back into the, uh, into the water, uh -huh. which I feel it needs to, to have it in as well. And then, then that, that will merge the way I want it to merge. And I don't mind it going right down the bottom there like that, so it's giving me the reflection I want. It's really letting the water do its work, isn't it? So I'm letting the water do its own work. There's some magic things happening already mm. with the paint. And that's, that's what I'm after achieving with the brush and the paint. So I'll put some more darks back up into here. And how essential with your style of work is it for that paper to still be wet? Is it Very essential, okay. very essential. So right near the very end is when I touch up the rest of the work okay. for the last bits. But I work totally on the beautiful sense of the, the wet paper. So I'm sh putting the shapes now of those washes in there, which forming trees. So I'm going to just put the dark in at the bottom here, just, just to form the composition that I need to put in through here now. Yep. To make that work just through there. You can see those soft reflections coming through already. You can see them starting to work already. Now, there's a couple of things I might do here. I might add some, what I would call, maybe some rocks and something, just out here, just to make it a little bit more interesting for me. Uh -huh. Just in through there like that. Maybe just pull off a couple of things down there like that. Uh -huh. yeah. And I might just soften it with another little brush, just the edges. Soft edges are beautiful things in painting. They're, as my teacher always used to say, the, the soft edges are what make a great, great painting. So we've got to a stage now where it's probably middle of the road, this watercolour, in in, towards the getting to a finished state. There's a couple of things I'd like to do. I'm going to run a darker wash through here, which is different to the image, mm -hmm. totally different to the image, but I feel it needs a darker wash in there, which will make it really glow. It's probably time to also bring in the sky. So the sky, has got some grey clouds in it, which I think are 
are fairly important for this. That's definitely a Clive Sinclair statement. <laughs> <laughs> so we might just use a bit of the yellow there. It's just with that sort of loaded brush with it's, water it's in it. It's loaded brush with a little bit of water on it, yeah. Right, now I think the sky just needs a little bit of blue just up in the top corner here too, just just a touch, just to cement it back down in here. Now some of these, uh, and we'll just screen them up now, I mean, afternoon in Mentone Beach. Yep. I mean, the softness of those colours, the crimsons and the purples are beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, look, they are beautiful. And it's that, that time of the light I love. I mean, evening painting is what I really do love. I also like the picture that you've got. It's called Late Light Evening at Ricketts Point. It's a very long piece. Yes. But uh, that's just magnificently put together. It's just you, you wander through the painting. You do. You can't help it. Thank you. Yeah, th and that's the long format of mm. which the Heidelberg School use of Condor and Street and, and yes. people like that that made that format work. And I think it's a wonderful format. Yeah. yeah. As Whistler said, he believed, and as he and Tom Roberts went to his ten o'clock lecture in London at the time, that um, when Tom Roberts was studying painting in London that a nine inch by five inch painting was, in Whistler's eyes, the most complete sense for the eye for any painting that you can paint in size. Yeah. For the senses of the eye. And in a way, and that's where our famous, of course, cigar box lids that's exhibition was, came, yes. of the Heidelberg School, yeah. was from the nine inch by five inch paintings. Right, now to finish this painting, I need to just put in a couple of darks here a bit more mm -hmm. in the foreground. Uh, just so the eye goes up, and it's, it's the old painting of Street News, the Lopper's Constable Turner's, if you've got a dark foreground then your eye leads into the middle light into the background better. So it's a format that I tell students to paint with a light, it's a dark foreground a lot. So I'll just take this out. And it just peels off. It just peels off, as a, as a masking fluid peels off. There you go, look at that. And it just makes it glow a little bit more. That's it, now we've got it. Look at that. Which just gives you the feel. So I might just disguise that a fractal with this little brush. Yeah. Just in here a bit, just to soften it. It's just that last light creeping through. Yep, through the bushes there. Beautiful. There you go. How about that? Fantastic. Well, we're very privileged today because of the amazing way that you paint, is that we're going to be able to do two paintings. Yes, okay. Which, which is which, which is, is great. It's just yeah. fantastic. Yes. I mean, the fact that you, you teach at Brighton Art Society, at uh, Bomaris Art Society, Mentone Art Society. I mean, you know, we're really privileged to to be with Clive today and see what he does. But let's let's get it stuck into the second one then. All right, terrific. Well done. All right, Clive. Second part of this show. Very exciting. Another painting. Another painting indeed. I've got this photo on my wife's little iPhone, yeah. which we took in Provence, France. So what I thought I'd do now with a bit different to the watercolour paper before, I'm going to run a whole red wash over the whole of the paper mm -hmm. just to warm this up because this is a very grey painting So uh, on a grey day. So same again with my hake brush. I'll run it right through there like that. Yep. Fresh water of course. Fresh water. So it's whole clean water from uh, a new paint, painting. I, I don't change my water during the whole painting but when I start a new painting I obviously do because in watercolour it's always important to get the light and dark and the lights are always are the pure washes in the beginning so you must do that otherwise it just doesn't come through. So that's all done so we put on the vermilion red again which will be quite stark and strong right through it. And this is really as you said it's grey you want to warm the background. It's to, it's to warm the background so it is it's a very grey cold sort of painting. Not that Provence is cold but it was a grey day when I took this across the field. So we will need to let this dry before I go on with my next wash. So it's, it's a bit like what Turner used to do. Turner used to do a whole lot of watercolours with different tint backgrounds, blues, reds, grey, yellows and would peg them along a line and just make them work that way. Yeah, so really good. And so he would then go out and go into the landscape or travel with a tinted background on a watercolour paper already, which makes it um, much, it stops with having some white there. Uh, so it gives it a bit of a chance to get onto the paper a lot quicker. Fantastic, well, we'll let that dry then. Let that dry, yep, Great. okay.
Right, so we've let this dry and we're now going to put on a, a blue wash with ultramarine blue through here. Now, Ooh. it's fairly solid this. Yeah. And I'll brush it right through this way like this. You don't worry about those dribbles? Of no, the dribbles I'll, I'll catch up very quickly with and then I'll mix up a grey. So I've got a grey still on my palette from before. A greeny grey which will give me the foreground for the painting. So already you can see the warmth of the paper coming through. I'll bring in some distance mountains which need to be there. So I'll go to my mop again. Actually these mops are really great mops. Mm -hmm. They're um, seniors and they're neefs and they're actually all artificial all artificial hair, mm. but they're as good as a squirrel here and they carry as much water, they're just fantastic and at half the price. Yeah, as long so as they, they keep their volume. They do, they keep their volume really well. Yeah. They're, they're fantastic brushes, really good. So I'll run that back hills through there like that. Oh, lovely. So the back mountains of the Apilles yeah. and Provence, Cezanne country. You take workshops to I France. I take workshops you? to France, so we, um, we land at Paris and we paint four days in Paris plus the galleries and one of those is we paint at uh, Giverny and Monet's garden. Yeah. So that's a speciality and um, which they love and uh, uh, the water lilies plus everything else. Then from there we go to a beautiful seaside resort called Honfleur which is right up on the Normandy coastline near uh -huh. Le Havre and that's like a little mini Venice, got a beautiful square. So we then take a train down to Provence to uh, a little villa down in Saint Remy and it's, it's very beautiful. So we spend 10 days there in a lovely villa which an Australian doctor owns who um, works in Harley Street or has a, his practice in Harley Street and owns four other villas in Europe. So it's, it's an wow. amazing place, yeah, Graham, yeah. So it's fantastic. It is fantastic. So uh, we've done three of those trips and everyone's enjoyed them very much. Uh, and that in going to Arles to see where Vincent's house was and of mm -hmm. course Axon Provence is our studio so mm -hmm. we always go a day through there. So plenty of painting, plenty of French food and plenty of lovely French wine. So it's, it's a great, great place to be and the weather is around autumn when we go which is just it's beautiful. beautiful. Just off the top holiday season in France, they've all yeah. gone back to work and we've got it to ourselves. So, yeah, so fantastic. yep, we run those every, every year so um, anyone can get in contact with those. What a fantastic way to have a holiday and be taught by a master artist. Now, how do people get in touch with you? With my website, clovesinclair.com.au. So I'm going to get some darks, which are just going to go in here, just so it gives me a bit more of the horizon and, and back through there. So that's giving me a darkness through there. Now I will mix some burnt umber back into this again. I will drag that across in here. Oh, that's a bold statement again, isn't it? So not to be too frightened about putting your washes in bold. A lot of people have been timid, but it, it works well if you can get some of these washes to go bold in through there. Well, I think a special part about today as well is that uh, you're actually painting in the Quadrant Gallery. Yes, I uh, am. Due to the gracious support of uh, Pam and Tony Jackson. Yes. They're just fantastic people that absolutely love art. And they do. Get right they behind do. everybody, don't they? They do. They're wonderful. Look, very, very good gallery. Mm. Lovely people to deal with. And um, yeah, I'd certainly recommend any other artists to have a show here with them. There's no doubt about that at all. But I'm one of their sort of regulars, which has been, and uh, a couple of my friends are too. So yeah. very fine people to exhibit with and uh, have a show with. So yeah, worth every minute of it. Yeah, And the space is beautiful, as your viewers will be seeing anyway. Yeah. It's, it's a lovely gallery and a lovely space through it. I'll probably start working some of my own images through here now, but I've got that Provence light. As you can see, that warmth still coming through here. Yeah. I still like that. The purple back kills the Apilles and then this painting back through there again mm. of the hills behind it. It's got that French f sort of feel and light coming through it. We'll put a little passage through there, I think. Uh, run that passage in through there like that. This is where I paint through feel. It's mm -hmm. basically painting through feel and, and working the way I think the strokes should be on it. It's almost, in a sense, abstract painting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same as abstract painting in the sense, but you feel the sense of where things have got to be. But we might just do something like this, just to make it a little bit more interesting at the background there, through there. 
So it has that Provence feel to it. One of the pieces I really love is the evening in Lower Head, Tasmania, which is a fantastic piece. The atmosphere in that yeah. is quite amazing. Look, it's one of the places I take people to Tasmania to paint. The place we stay at is a lovely old um, pilot station and, and the school has to convert into accommodation. So we, I take two to three classes there a year and uh, we all stay there. I, we fly into Launceston and I get a 12-seater bus I drive around my wife and I and um, and we do all the painting on location. So this is a bigger version I did in my studio, but the smaller version, which I dearly love, is almost a nine by five, is on done on location. Yeah, so. beautiful, beautiful island, beautiful scenery. Oh, it is, it's wonderful, yeah. Yeah, it really is. It's well beautiful, done. yeah. Okay, so we'll get back to this painting now. It's dried a bit. I, I just think there's only a little bit more I want to do in this foreground, and then I think it's finished. I think it's got, got a, a feel of a finished painting across Provence in the, in the um, autumn and uh, we'll leave it from there. So this is the colour, the dark colour I'm using here to mix back just on that bottom of that there. It's a bit of the raw umber and a bit of the brown and a little bit of green. And I just want to run it along through here a bit, that's all. Just to make it a little bit dark and the paper's dry that little bit more so it gives it a bit more of a three dimensional effect at the front. And I think that'll just about do me as, as a painting. I think that sort of works for me and uh, Says it all. Fantastic. Sure. Yeah. Well done. Okay. Well, guys, another fantastic day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Graham. Thank you for having me on your Clive show. Clive Sinclair, an amazingly talented man. Broad, broad scope of workshops. Now, one thing we did want to mention was Tasmania as well. Yes, we did, yeah. Getting down to Tasmania, if you would like to go with Clive to Tasmania with some of his workshops, this is one of the results of, of down in Tasmania. It's a beautiful piece of work, very talented man. So your website is? clivesinclair.com.au And we'd also like to thank Pam and Tony Jackson once again from the Quadrant Gallery in Hawthorne. Really got behind you, yeah. get behind a lot of people. This is a fantastic gallery and they're doing a, an amazing job for all of the artists, and they have some of the best artists in Melbourne in this gallery too. They do. It's just quite amazing. Also, come to colourinyourlife.com.au and come in and see all the great things that we've got going on there these days, and our Facebook page. Lots of things happening there as well. But once again, Clive, well Thank done, you. mate. Thank well you, done. Graham. Oh, he's a surfer too. Yeah. <laughs> we're back yep. surfers. Back, sur back surfers, we're both surfers, that's it's right. fantastic Inside day. Inside the tubes, yeah. Uh, until we meet again, guys, remember, Make sure you put some colour on your life. We'll see you next time. See you next Bye, time. Guys. Bye. See ya. Bye.